Greetings and welcome back. So we're going to try to build out the products now the same way as we built out the city. So hopefully you're trying uh, you know, to do these as assignments yourself. And, uh, but we're basically going to take the same pattern now and build products. So let's come up here and create a new scene. That was just like adding a plus there. Let's go. And again, we're just going to use a, a generic node. We're not going to have any uh, visual UI components in these objects. So I have our node right here, and I can come up on this. And in our GD script attached to the node, we'll just take the default. And for this node, we're just going to add for this is uh, when we save our scene. Let's go ahead and save the scene as product. So this is going to be our product object. And in here we're going to have our variable. So we want obviously product name. And we're going to have a min price. And we're going to have a max price. like that and that'll be a good enough place uh, to start and you know these are just placeholders where obviously every products gonna have different ones right so we're just storing data once again in our product so we can come back over here and we know that this syntax is gonna be the same so we can instead of having city we'll have product and instead of city here we'll have product and then it'll warn you if it can't find it down there says fail uh, loading resource so we'll see I don't think it could fail I don't believe it product.gd let's run can't preload resource at path so it's not liking our product so far. I don't know what I did wrong. Oh, I oh, no, I did save it here, didn't I? Oh. Or somehow I got this thing named as node. Let's see if I can rename that. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, so this got messed up when it got named as node here. So I could theoretically import it like this. But you know and actually not a big deal uh, to do it that way is there a rename down in here yeah so I'm gonna rename it product huh ah uh, who knows what that's gonna do to us <laughs> But we'll see if it works. Okay, so now if I change this to product, will it not complain? All right, we'll see. Let's run it. Remember, city already exists in parent class. Oh, there we go. I think we got it now. So I'm going to leave that in there for now. I'm not going to edit that out. It looked like it was just me forgetting to... Uh, to name it properly and I just was able to go in and rename it so we got our product in here now so let's create a create products method and we'll create them and you might want to create these methods in their respective classes wouldn't be necessarily a bad idea um, so product one now I'm gonna show you another way to do this so this is, gets a little bit of a pain to write all this out if you have a whole bunch of properties you're setting. But we can have a constructor, and that's the name that we usually use in object-oriented programming. So when we create product, 
we can pass this data along. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to use this func in it, and this is built in to the engine, so it's going to call this automatically. And we can have up here, we can have variables that are arguments that are getting passed to this method. So we're going to actually see now how these parameters come in. So I'm going to have underscore product name, and I'm putting that underscore in, in front just so that it won't conflict with these up here because Godot doesn't like that. You can get away with it in Python. doesn't seem like you get away with it as well in Godot. So I'm, I'm just making these variables up here because we're going to pass these in when we create our product. And it'll make a lot more sense once we're done. So product name is going to equal product name that we're passing in. Min price is going to equal the minimum price that we pass in. And max price is going to equal the max price that we pass in just like that and so it's going to be expecting these now when this node starts up if we run this now it probably I would expect if we created products well we haven't got it even close to being done yet so when we create our products we're going to say create product new but now we can pass along in our constructor like that and then we still are going to add it to the list the same way but you can see how it makes it so that we don't have to list these out vertically we can just pass these along as parameters comma se separated parameters that will then show up inside up here in our data so let's go back and do one more product so I'll just get rid of those now and we'll have product 2 product 2 and obviously we want arms and we don't want Hong Kong we want general goods and just now to see if we got something that we want well we're going to print out products Let's print out the first product and let's print out the product name of the first product. So we can see. We start. And we got an error. Identifier not found products. Oh, I forgot. We are empty list to start with. So we start out with nothing. And then we'll have something. And you can see that it printed out general goods right down there. So with that. Um, there's one more thing that we want to do that's really neat. Come in here, func, and we'll say uh, calculate price. I'll say calculate. And um, we're going to say var return. How about the random of these of these so we have a rand and you'll notice that there's a random range here and then we can just use min price comma max price just like that and anytime we call this now um, from anywhere we can get a random price based upon the minimum and maximum price. So let's see if we can make that happen out here and say print products zero. So we just reach in there and get the first one dot and I already forgot what I called it. Calculate price. So It'll call into there, get it, and print it right out through here. So let's see what we get when we do that. Non-existent function calculate price. So I'm going to copy it here so I make sure that we get it just right. There, I misspelled it. So misspellings will get you every time. And you can see there that it rounded it to 4.62 or didn't round it it gives us this integer or this this float so we would want to take and probably return an integer on that so it's going to take the float 
and convert it to an integer. So let's run it again. And you can see now we just got a four instead. So that's how you can generate random numbers using this rand range fun. So with that said, I'm going to end this lecture. I think we accomplished a lot. We got our products now set up. We, you know, getting our list of them together. And we can see also how we can create a custom method here inside of our new class. And this shows you the real power as opposed to we could never get that with a dictionary, for example, when we were storing our data in another format. So I think uh, that gives us a good. Uh, place to stop in this lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to start seeing how we can now tie in the concept of city products and being able to keep track of our prices by city. So we're really doing a deep dive into the architecture of this game so we can get these data structured together and get our data stored properly. Uh, and then we'll worry on the backside in the lecture about how to actually create an interface to uh, present these products and their prices and purchase them and so forth.